please join me in welcoming to the stage the Enfant Terrible of social media analytics, with emphasis on the terrible and perhaps on the Enfant as well. One of our very own founding fathers and executive chairman of Social Bakers, Jan Rezab. That was a tough dance, I have to tell you guys. Welcome to Engage. So, we've been organizing this event now for five years. Started over in New York five years ago. This is our third Engage Prague. Welcome. Uh, we're going to play, it's a, called Engage, so we're going to play a little bit of a social game. Uh, take out your phones. Who doesn't have them? I mean, everybody has their phones. So, open Facebook. And we're going to invite a lot of people to this party. We have a lot of people here, but let's invite more people to join. Go to the Social Bakers page. And if we're lucky, we're going to find it, thanks to Facebook search. And you're going to look at that live video. There's a handsome fella over there on that video. And we only have a couple hundred viewers right now. So let's make that a couple thousand. So all of you just, oh, I'm streaming, share that video. We can just go ahead and share now. And let's make this party a bigger party. All right, I'm going to wait for everybody and my table over here, which is not there. So everybody shared? All right. So, great. Now that we've invited a lot of people, let's watch that, let's watch that audience grow. So, when we look at Engage and our events that we've done over the past few years, we've always focused on social media and social media marketing. Today is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we've also invited speakers that don't do social media per se, marketing, um, they are focused, oops, oh, there was a little bit of a delay, hint, oh, should have seen that. So we're, lo we're looking at having people that speak about uh, changing the world through social media. And luckily we're not going to have that guy speak, but social has changed the world in, in many directions in the last 18 months. And we want to address not only the marketing part of things, but also that nonprofit, uh, non-government organization. So we have folks from great organizations from around the world that came to speak. And we will have a great day speaking today. And we're going to have great shows and great speakers. And we're going to learn a lot about how the social landscape works. I want to open it with a thought behind social and social media today. When we look at digital as a category and look at the ad spend, social is sort of coming right up there towards digital. And digital for the first year is going to surpass television advertising. That's pretty big. But what's also going to happen is basically a majority of that social revenue is actually Facebook's revenue if you look at it. It's been growing quite a lot. Now, social media advertising today is bigger than the newspaper advertising industry. And it's only a few years old. So there are some things to think about. Where is that going? And when I always look at where social is going, obviously Facebook's the dominant player in the social media category. And today, Facebook's properties have over $35 billion of advertising revenue just last year. This year is going to be over $40 billion. Next year, who knows? When we look at the non-monetized assets of Facebook, they haven't monetized a dollar of WhatsApp, of Messenger, of pretty much Oculus. A, few, a little bit of money in their context here and there. But social is really going to be huge. And we don't even know sort of YouTube's revenue out there. They don't publicly disclose the breakdown in Google. 
And when we look at these huge social platforms, I mean, the top 10 televisions combined couldn't be as big as these platforms, each and every one of them. We have four multi-billion user ecosystems already. Now, a few years ago, we didn't know this would happen. We have four one-plus billion monthly active users. And we have three that are going to very clearly get there soon. WeChat, Instagram, and of course, LinkedIn. So there are going to be seven platforms in the next 18 months that have over a billion users. And Facebook, at that point, might be over three billion. And again, that makes, that makes us think, all right, how do I design my campaigns as a marketer? And if I want you to go home with one thing from my talk today, I want you to start thinking of your campaigns in a social first way. And this is, you know, maybe you are designing campaigns from a TV first or digital first way today. But one way to th start thinking about it is looking at things social first. Now, we're going to get to why, but obviously the data on one hand clearly shows us social is going Right up there, it's going to be 45% of digital ad spending next year, bigger than most of the categories. But the second angle is also production. Social campaigns include all elements that all the other channels have or even don't have, which means if you master the social media campaigns, you're mastering all the other ones very, very easily. And of course, each platform needs a very different approach, and they evolve and change all the time. So when I look at Instagram, I see a very creative platform, sort of the right brain approach. When I look at Facebook, it, it used to be a little more creative, and it still is, but they're more becoming a news platform. Now, of course, at Social Bakers, we have the data to look at that. So when we look at engagement across all the Facebook pages we are monitoring, which is pretty much we cover the top 90% of all the pages in the world. And when we summarize all the engagements on those pages, media are the number one category. And of course, we see a huge uplift. If you actually monitor that uplift, that's almost exclusively Donald Trump related. But let's park that for a minute. So Facebook is more of a news platform. We see sort of brands on that bottom, the red line, the bottom red line going up. Still growing, but not as big. When I compare that with engagement on Instagram, now of course Instagram is a bigger platform. The scales are the same, but this is a data point that I really want you to sort of also take away with. The scales are the same. So the number one category on Instagram are celebrities. So of course, this shows you really the difference between the platforms. And of course, you see also the scale. Many of these categories are bigger on Instagram than they are on Facebook. Now, Facebook is almost 2 billion monthly active users. Face uh, Instagram is only 700 million. But Facebook into that number might count Messenger. They might count the Facebook login platform. They might count a lot of elements, which might equalize that actual monthly active users in that newsfeed. So when we look at newsfeed and newsfeed, it is possible and probable that Instagram might be the new place for your friends, where you interact with things you're more interested in, and Facebook's becoming your news platform, news homepage. So is Instagram or can Instagram be bigger than Facebook? Well, one thing's for sure. We know Facebook doesn't care. They own them both. But if we look at it category by category, celebrities are 3.6 times more engaging, have more engagement on Instagram than they do on Facebook. That's a lot. And if you see the trend line on the Facebook side is going down. So a lot of the Instagram engagement is replacing the engagement um, on, on, uh, on in, being replaced by the engagement on Instagram. When you look at uh, the media, Instagram is definitely not a media platform. This is very clear from the data. And when you look at brands, brands are three times bigger in terms of engagement on Instagram than they are on Facebook. Now again, Instagram, you know, people tend to like content more on Instagram. 
So when it comes to reach, we can't really say that yet. We'll have that data hopefully next year. But it's something to think about. And one thing to look at is a social media managers. A lot of you either lead social or social reports into you, or you are social directors and managers of companies around the world. People ask me, what should an ideal social media manager look like? And unfortunately, it's starting to be kind of no answer whatsoever. Because five years ago, there was a clear answer. OK, you're the social media manager, sort of manage the community. Uh, you send out the posts on our Facebook page, on our Twitter page. You know, you boost them a little bit. Maybe you try a viral video. Obviously, that, that doesn't exist anymore. But that was a pretty simple job. You published on pretty much two or three platforms, and you were done with it. But what social media marketing is becoming perhaps the most unidentifiable and one of the toughest jobs in marketing. Well, that should make you feel good. I see a lot of you taking pictures of that. Definitely send that to your parents, right? They're still going to think you're browsing Facebook all day, but and still they're not going to understand what you do. But at least it makes you feel better. That's what's important, right? Um, but social marketing has become infinitely more complex. Countless many more platforms. Countless many more disciplines. You have to basically be perfect. Every week, you have to learn X new things that the platforms launch. On a yearly basis, on average, social platforms add one to two metrics every single week. And you have to learn the background of that metric. You have to learn to understand that, measure that, put that in your reporting. My god, that's very difficult. Just last year, we had new, completely new things. 360 spherical content was launched on Facebook's news feed. So you could do 360 photos, spherical photos, and 360 videos. We pulled that data. I was shocked by the adoption. Already in many industries, between 5 and 10% of companies have adopted spherical content. Kudos to those marketers. It's hard to produce that stuff. You know, there are almost very few cameras on the market that can actually do that. And the content production is much, much harder. So coming back to that social first, you know, if you create content social first, you're going to have that spherical content ready, which could be eventually VR ready, of course. But when we look at live video, live video on Facebook, for example, didn't exist a few years ago. Today, over 80% of the media companies out there use, have used live video. And many of the brands do as well. And this is, a, again, a difficult channel, especially from a corporate communications perspective. Everything is sort of happening. Anything can happen. And the bots, for example, uh, you know, I, I hear CEOs not so excited about live video when I talk to them, but they're extremely excited about using artificial intelligence to do customer care, to do service, and other things. And when we zoom in onto some of these things that are new in the last year, social stories, and generally building content in a way. Of course, Snapchat has invited, uh, invented that format, story-type format. And many media companies and some brands have jumped on the opportunity to build it. And even though I'm, I'm a huge Snapchat critic when it comes to their valuation, I don't discount the service itself at all. It's a very strong service with a big teen audience in the US and a few other markets. Absolutely. Facebook, of course, has completely copied it into four of its major channels and now have more monthly active, uh, more daily active users uh, than Snapchat. So it's really important in the next six months, this number is likely going to be 300, 400 million users using that. So as a marketer, that makes you think, okay, should I start producing content maybe even primarily in portrait mode. And that's something to sink in. Shh, you know, do I do it like this, like this? Or do I do it both ways, of course? That creates pretty funky cameras, but you need to start thinking that way. And bots, of course. What I've been shocked about, I'm on the board uh, of this company, Gamey, it's a social network. What I've been shocked about is the deep engagement in bots. I thought people would just send a few messages, you know, have some fun. People spend 18 minutes per day in a bot. So this really shows us 
the bot is going to be something sort of before the apps, before maybe even some of the, some of the other engagement. And that interaction is a form of engagement. And of course, when you looked at Google I.O., what they launched just two days ago, is they launched instant apps, which means you won't have to have people download your app again. So people can go from bot directly to your instant app. And this is where this is all going, of course. And Social Bakers, we've been around for a while. We founded the company with three other co-founders uh, eight and a half years ago. So, and we founded, we sort of almost by accident founded the company. We uh, came and met at a coffee place and the guys sort of didn't know if, if they wanted to do business with me or if they really wanted to, to work together. And they sort of decided, okay, 51%, okay, we're gonna try this. And first, we didn't actually build social media analytics. We built some apps for marketers. Um, no offense to the marketers, but being an agency for, for marketers, uh, you know, for brands, kudos to many of the agencies to take a lot of that, create feedback. <laughs> only the agencies left and only the ones that didn't have their clients sitting right by them. <laughs> and we then went on, got a few funding rounds and grew the company, uh, grew the company to uh, what, it is, what it is today. And you're welcome to visit us uh, upstairs. It's actually a coincidence that our two floor offices, which are pretty much as big as this venue, are above, above this lovely venue. And when we look at our journey and the social media journey, originally we, we just sort of measured social media. We counted the numbers from all these networks and gave them to the marketers. And social was evolving, the social pages, Facebook, Facebook ads, Facebook pages, Twitter, page, Twitter, a, Twitter ads, et cetera, were sort of coming into play. Very quickly, we figured out that's not enough, clearly. So we launched sort of benchmarking and competitive intelligence into the platform. This is when we really started to see pickup of usage on our platform. But in the last 18 months, we've evolved the platform very deeply and gotten into predictive analytics. So we now look at past performance of basically entire categories of content and then try and predict the performance and help marketers through that. Of course, not all of them learn to use that but we hope that in the next 18 month journey again, we're gonna teach our audiences and clients to use that type of intelligence. And I'm gonna give you uh, a little case study here of, of our Social Baker Suite, something we've launched just a month ago on a company that I'm on the board of. And we've launched, for example, this dashboard where you can customize, edit, put in all the KPIs you want, and you're sort of all set up. You can follow that journey, you can have your conversions, you can have your, all your intelligence there. We also launched this predictive analytics module where you go in, you look at your recent content, and you're like, okay, that content seems to be performing really, really nicely. Let's zoom in on it and see what it is. And you look at it and saying, this is performing really nicely organically. Okay, let me promote it. That type of real-time intelligence, you can also look at any of your competitors' campaign and see what they're doing. And of course, really important these days is where do you get all the ideas out there? So one of the, one of the aspects is let's get inspired, right? So to be able to search an entire vast database. So you can search anything from all the billions of posts we have in our database, search it, and you get immediately sorted by interactions, the content, and voila. Here's one of our pieces of content. We wouldn't be able to discover that, for example, with a regular social listening platform. And of course, what marketers fail to do today, in order to be able to, in the future, teach these artificial intelligence platforms, you really need to start labeling all your content that you have on all your social properties. And also, we've done that over here. We've labeled all of that content and try and understand, okay, what is a better category of content? And now, I didn't quite like some of that visual, so we went ahead and exported it into Tableau, which Social Bakers now directly connects to, and been able to provide some deeper charts. 
So Social Bakers is also open a connection into Office 365, into Excel, direct plugin, so you can really be in Excel and actually download your social data. We've now opened an API, so you can roll the data in any of your platforms, in your native tools, in your data warehouses. If you still use data warehouses, uh, if you don't use cloud warehouses. Or you can also use Tableau. And when we exported that, basically that section into Tableau, you can do whatever you want. You can sort it out, okay, so what area was important when it comes to reach for me? So I can see here it was strollers, and then it flipped orange over there were car seats. So I immediately have that intelligence. And I can, of course, compare that. What was that on total impressions? Any, anything. Tableau is also very flexible. So these imports really work. So when it comes to these campaigns, why think social first? Well, two reasons. If the data of the advertising industry doesn't convince you already, if the growth of Facebook, factual growth of Facebook's revenue and monthly active users also doesn't convince you, then the production aspect definitely should. Because if you produce social first, you're going to be ready for all the other channels. And this is very, very important. Thank you very much. Do we have questions? I can't see a thing in the audience. Do we have questions from this? Whoa, there's a lot of people here. Hello. Wow. Very cool. In the meanwhile, before you get the courage to be the first one during the day to raise your hand, I know it's always hard, um, we have a speaker coming up right after. I want to tell a little story. Um, we have. Uh, met with Pete Blackshaw five years ago, over five years ago, I think now, six actually. And uh, uh, we've invited him to the first Engage conference in New York. And it was in Engage 2012 New York. And he couldn't make it, so he made a lovely video. And since then, every year, we invited him, we invited him, we invited him. And it was always a scheduling conflict. But finally, we have him. In the morning, he sent me a message. Oh, I broke my leg running. So sorry. Not, not sure if I can make it. And he was joking. Who does that? At a morning of an event like this, my heart went from zero to, oh my God, BPM, very, very quickly. So there's going to be maybe a subtle way where I'm going to return that favor later today. Um, not going to be that subtle. Uh, and do we have those questions? Shy. Oh, there's a question over there. Do we have microphones, running microphones? I hear something in the back. Running microphones? I can be the microphone. Hello, microphone people. Hello, Jan. Hello. Uh, Geneviève Petit from uh, Petit Web in Paris, France. Uh, what do you think about uh, the position of Facebook? Because you consider it as a world in itself. Yes. But uh, won't we be all prisoners of Facebook? Well, yes. Um, no, kidding. Um, well, I think actually in the world of social media, we, we have pretty deep platform diversity. If you compare it to search, where Google has, I don't know what, 99.9%. .9%, I mean, some people probably still use Bing in China because they can't use Google. Um, but really, Facebook's dominance is, is, of course, big. They've acquired all the major social platforms that sort of getting in there into their way. But you know, are they sort of the I got the question yesterday, are they sort of the big and evil player and what should we expect from them? <clears throat> I look at the, these players and look at their past behavior and past performance and Facebook has shown improvement on all levels in terms of privacy towards users. And you know, Facebook is only as valuable and not the code on its platform, but it's the people that use it. So once they would you know, sort of 
take that trust away from the equation, I believe people would very quickly flock onto another platform. So I don't think that you know, Facebook has a way of using that dominance, which they are definitely dominant in the social space. But also I like that we have sort of this network diversity, especially this Facebook Instagram thing, I think is a pretty big deal. And even though Facebook owns both, they operate very independently as from a user perspective. And I think that's important to keep. Do we have another question? There's Rod over there. Do we have a runner? Volunteers from the back, can you run over here? Thank you. Going back. Hey, Jan. Hey. Uh, my question is more around the, uh, the platforms themselves. What do you see the future of them? Do you think they'll continue to be open in terms of providing data uh, to people like social bakers? Or do you think they're going to make it more difficult in the future? Well, we look at Twitter, for example, right? That made it slightly harder to provide uh, data. And we look at where they've ended. Uh, because by closing some of the parts of the platforms, uh, you close certain connectivity with uh, developers out there also that support your platform and you close down the ecosystem. At this point, I believe it would be impossible for Facebook to lock that down. But what they will definitely do is they will build a set, build a set of private data which is going to exist in their advertising platform that is going to be unique to that client, etc. And they're going to, I think the, the philosophy that they've applied a few years ago that they said is that public data will remain public in the APIs. So we'll be able to load them and create dashboards from them. Of course, there's always a big discussion going on. Um, the SEO industry, the search engine optimization industry knows this problem because Google and all search engines were originally open in terms of their API, they closed down. But of course, it's still publicly available data, so they build plugins to scrape that data anyway. So you know, they can make it harder, they can't make it impossible, it's still public data. and. Uh, I think it would be a step backwards for Facebook, and I know there probably might be internal debates, but I think they get it. They understand uh, the, the downside that that would create. Thank you for the question, good one. Do we have any other questions? One in the back. Hello. Hi. Um, just regarding Facebook, when do you think it will be possible to do an actual transaction on Facebook? to what? actually purchase a product through Facebook? Whew, that's a good question. Um, well, Facebook, I think, hasn't been hiding the fact that they're somewhat working on different payment-related modules, right? And these Canvas ads, instant, instant articles, instant Canvas, those, those, those all point to the direction of, all right, you're going to have a product page basically directly on Facebook, and when you click Buy Now, why not build via Facebook? And this is where I really think the bots are going to come in. And when you write a service bot, it's going to give you both a recommendation and a link to a shop and the payment method. It would be absolutely illogical to fill a payment method in every single shop, right? And of course, you're not going to be able to use that for virtual goods because of Apple's and Google's rules, uh, but you're going to be able to use this for physical services and physical uh, goods. So Uber can exist, for example, in the Facebook Messenger ecosystem as a separate app without a need for a deeper experience. You just order an Uber, pay straight from there, and your sort of Messenger payment method is, is there. We've seen them experiment with it. We haven't seen them scale it yet, but we're seeing other messengers implement payments for, uh, for physical goods as well now. So I think Facebook's typically followed the path and followed that innovation, watched that data for a little bit. But uh, great question, and I think definitely going into that direction. And that's what's not even projected in terms of Facebook revenue. That was just like an ad revenue projection. But if you look at Facebook's potential on the direct commerce side, I mean, we're getting into a whole different ballgame. Thank you. Maybe let's, there's a question over there in the front. That's going to be a tougher cookie. Maybe throw the microphone. Don't hit the people. Hi, 
Hi, Ian. Hi. Uh, there is a huge trend going on on um, uh, virtual assistants. And some people say that in the near future, you, you will use our devices only to see videos and to orbit our user interface will change a lot, will really transform it. So my, uh, my question is, uh, how do you think that this will may impact the social media analytics and in less stance marketing itself? Great question. For me, a virtual assistant is just a bot in a way a bot where you're having a conversation, it's just not a written conversation in Facebook Messenger, it's a, a, a verbal conversation. So I don't honestly care if that happens on an assistant or not. The question is, what role will social platforms play in assistants, in these physical assistants? So far, Amazon has probably the biggest amount of progress in that area, but that space is so new, we're in the millions of units, right? Amazon has sold first sort of 10, 20, 30 million units. Uh, for of the Alexa devices, uh, but I think we're going to see a huge, huge evolution in that space. To be able to predict where that's going to land and what powers, who's going to have which power, I have no clue right now because I I it's unpredictable right now. It could be Microsoft, could be, will be Amazon. In the purchasing space, of course it's going to be Amazon. They're deploying a limitless amount of money towards that space. But in sort of the social news aspect, I mean, anyone can build on top of the Amazon platform, right? You can build a skill and you can ask, hey, Alexa, ask Facebook how my friends are doing. And, but you still don't have the sort of the image aspect and the video aspect. So I still don't believe we're just gonna throw away our phones and have microphones arrays everywhere. That's definitely not happening in the nearest future. Of course, that could be surpassed by some virtual screens in your eyes, but I think that's also a little bit further, you know, maybe Magic Leap are eventually going to actually release a device that does augmented reality. So maybe then. Another, maybe last question or the two last questions. We have one over here in the front. Not to make it easy for running around. Okay. Hi, my name is Aisha. Hi. I actually had a question about your thoughts on Pinterest because there's a lot of we thought of it as a scrapbooking tool or a glorified shopping list, but now a lot of research is showing that um, Pinterest is able to drive sales, and you see they're talking about expanding uh, across the globe. So I wanted to hear your thoughts on that as an em emerging or emergent platform. Absolutely. I, you know, we've, in Social Bakers, we've recently Im implemented Pinterest, and I think that's also showing what we think about it. We don't implement a platform unless we believe it's going to be stable and growing. Um, I think that Pinterest really has that great connection with amazing content. You can't do the same thing you do on Pinterest in Google Images. It won't be curated, it won't be social, and they really build a beautiful platform. I'm, I'm uh, doing some reconstruction in, in, in an apartment, and of course I'm on Pinterest like every day, and I do consider it a shopping list actually, and I think it's becoming also more than that lifestyle sort of uh, area. Maybe it's the equivalent of the old teleshopping when we were sort of in front of the TV, I don't know, but for sure here to stay and definitely e-commerce is sort of what we hear everywhere, right, in, in all of these social platforms and how they connect uh, back to that. And most topic for brands is, okay, how do I get my brand from all these distribution with all these retailers around the world and how can I take that audience directly? You know, basically what we're all doing is let's cut out the middlemen and let's do it direct. And I think we're getting there. I think the retailers are going to fight a lot around that, of course. And there's going to be online retailers like Amazon that we're going to have to work with. But I think the role of traditional non-branded retail is, is really shifting. And Pinterest is, and other social platforms are a big part of that, reason of that. Last question. Do we see one? Hand up. I have a lot of light in my... All right. Well, of course, you can find me all day. Thank you guys very much. <laughs>